Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today we're going to be going over how to make this abstract noise using a simple setup of Houdini's flip tank which is used for fluid simulations. We may dive into the tank more in the future but there are plenty of resources out there that focus specifically on flip simulations if you're looking for something more in depth. Well, Alright, let's get into it. First off, make a particle fluid tank. And I'm going to make the size 19.2 by 10.8 cents. Ultimately, I want this to fill the full frame. Now make a null and name it in underscore tank in all caps. Now we'll hop into the actual sim. So make a dot net and dive inside. So create a flip object, flip solver, and a gravity node and link them up like this. In the flip object, we'll grab that in underscore tank and setting to type to narrow band. Also go into the guides particles tab and switch it from sprites to particles just to view easier. Now if you hit play, you can see that we have these giant bounds and the fluid just falls out. So hop back out to our initial tank and right click the size, copy relative reference, and head back into the DOP, and in the flip solver, go to the volume motion tab and paste relative reference to the box. We'll wanna go back to the tank and copy the particle separation, and then back in the flip object, paste relative reference to the particle separation here. Now you hit play and the particles still just fall. So if you want to check on closed boundaries box in the flip object, it makes the edges act like a wall. So now if you play this, you can see we have our fluid simulation starting at least. So let's give it some force, which you can do similar to how you would do it with particles. So I'm just going to make a pop pop and wire it into the last node and hop in there. Just make a curl noise wire it out to the force and middle mouse click to promote all those parameters then just going to pop up and add dollar f times 0.01 in the y offset so that the noise moves a little bit and now if you hit play you can see that the water is alive and it's colliding with the edges now to speed things up, you can go into the flip solver narrow band tab and check that on. What this does is try to calculate just the top of the surface since you probably don't actually need all the data below. And while we're here, I'm just gonna go to the particle motion tab and check on this add ID box to use later. In my example, I had the water being stirred. So let's set that up. Hop out to the SOP level and make a sphere with a radius of 0.7, 2.5, and 0.7. And the center will move it out to minus 3 in the X. Now just drop a transform and add $F times 6 in the Y rotation so that it's spinning. And I'll make a null named collide in all caps. And then head back into the DOP net make a static object, pulling in the collide object, and check on deforming object. Make a merge node, setting it to a mutual, and wire these together. If we let this play, you can see that we've got the look that we're going for. We have a flip tank being stirred up by the sphere. In my render, for the colors, all I did is make a point vop, then grabbed the absolute value of the velocity, did a vector to float, and then found the max to get the fastest direction that the points are moving. Then did a fit from zero to two, and then a ramp, and then wire that out to the color. Then I just did a sphere that's packed, stretched it a little bit longer in the z-axis and copied it to points. 
Now for a more traditional fluid look, the fast way you could do this is just by using the particle fluid surface node by also pasting in that particle separation we have. And you can see that you actually have a mesh that you could apply, say a water texture to and render this as an actual tank of water. And there you have it. That's our introduction to flip tanks. If there's any effects that you'd like to see tutorials for in the future, please send them to me in the comments. The next one that I'm doing is actually one of your suggestions, so look forward to that. And uh, I'm hearing that you guys are asking about rendering. So I just want to address that. And uh, we're going to get there. We'll eventually do that. It's just tough trying to figure out how to teach since there's so many different renders that people use. So what I'm thinking about doing is just a series of breaking down the principles rather than technically going into each individual render. So covering things just like basic lighting and texturing and compositing, since ultimately that's how I'm getting the looks that I'm getting. The project files for this one are on our site. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and until next time.